the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. A reading from the 34th chapter of Ezekiel. Thus said the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out, as shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep. So I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been gathered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture. And the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pastures. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pastures on, on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel, according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me, gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me, and these will go away in eternal punishment, 
but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. Gracious God, may all we always see you in the faces of others. Now at this hour, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you, great God, are our rock and our salvation. Grace and peace to you from God. On this Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday in the church year, when we proclaim Jesus the Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, when we confess and profess God's reign and rule in our lives, there is an awful lot of talk about animals, about goats, and especially about sheep. What do we know about sheep? Well, I learned during my travels in Africa, sometimes it was very hard to tell the sheep from the goats. It's not like those sheep in our storybooks with this coat of wool all over them. That's not how they look in Africa. Yet our texts assure us that God knows the difference. Sheep are docile creatures and almost always willing to follow a leader. If sheep are in an enclosed space, all the sheep will stay close together because being clustered in mass lessens the effect of an attack. Yet by themselves, sheep are vulnerable. People who are timid, easily led, or stupid are usually compared to sheep, but sheep are not stupid. They are able to recognize the faces of those they encounter, and some scientists say they can recognize their own names. Sheep also have good peripheral vision and can see behind themselves without turning their heads. Yet sheep have trouble with depth perception, so they easily fall into holes and ruts and have to be rescued. In Ezekiel, we hear about the sheep that God rescues, sheep that have previously been mistreated by other shepherds. You see, the king of Israel, the kings of Israel were often described as shepherds with charge over the people of God. In verses 1 through 10 of this chapter of Ezekiel, we, we are told of shepherds that have been feeding themselves at the expense of the sheep. Shepherds, kings, rulers, or leaders that have abdicated their responsibility have forgotten the tax, task that have been set to and abused their authority. Hmm. Sound familiar? These leaders have not strengthened the weak, healed the sick, bound up the injured, injured, brought back the strays, or sought the lost. In the gospel, there is good news, however. The sheep are in the hands of God, a God who says, I will feed them with good pasture. Now in the care of God, who seeks the lost, brings back the stray, binds up the injured, and strengthens the weak and the sick. This is indeed the way that sheep should be cared for, right? This we can all agree on especially if we cast ourselves in the role of sheep, as we so often do when we say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. But not so fast. Along with picture of God's overwhelming grace that we hear, there is also judgment. God speaks of disappointment with some of God's sheep. There seems to be some interflock rivalry. It's not just the shepherds that seem to be self-absorbed and selfish in the 34th chapter of Ezekiel. It's also some of the sheep. Some sheep are taking more than they need. Some sheep are not being considerate of others. Some sheep are growing fat on the back of the lean. Some sheep have extravagant shelter, while other sheep are homeless. Some sheep have access to the best health care. Some have no health care. God says, I will strengthen the weak, but the fat I will destroy. We wonder what God will do with those who have gotten fat by pushing with flank and shoulder and bunting all the weak animals with horns until they are scattered far and wide. Not they, they were trying to hurt anyone. They were just trying to survive. Their families deserve a good life, don't they? 
These sheep trampling all over the good pasture don't really have time to look out for the smaller, weak sheep, do they? Perhaps they think if the leaders aren't going to look out for us, we'll look out for ourselves. The sheep are not like the shepherds intentionally taking advantage. After all, they really don't know what they're doing. In the Gospel of Matthew, we hear another one of those hard parables. I don't like it. I don't like being reminded that I am a sheep, that I might be a fat sheep, and I don't want to be a goat because for the goat, just like the servant that buried his talents and the five foolish bridesmaids, things don't look good. I don't want to contemplate the possibility that if I don't get it just right, the right amount of oil, the right use of talents, or the right way of helping the least of these, that I don't get to inherit eternal life. Yet let's take a closer look. Judgment is tempered with grace. In the text, neither sheep or goats know what they are doing. They didn't see Jesus. The sheep were possibly so self-absorbed with tons of things to do, tons of people to feed, tons of prisoners to visit, tons of sick to heal, so busy that they made the least an object and did not see their faces. And the goats, they were too selfish to see Jesus. What Jesus is telling us is to pay attention, that we are not only called to help, but to see our neighbor and love them, to listen, to observe what is going on around us and in our world, to value the other and not be so caught up in ourselves that we miss the encounter, that we miss the opportunity to engage with the least. Because if we do, We risk missing Jesus. When did we see you? When did we feed you? When did we visit you? Jesus says, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. The writer of Matthew is trying to tell us something. He is offering us once again the opportunity to reflect on who we are, sheep or goats, those who use or bury their talents, wise or foolish bridesmaids, those who live in fear or hope. While we take time to figure out who we are and how we will live our lives, we remember the promise proclaimed by the prophet Ezekiel as a promise for all of us. All of us sheep, fat and lean from God. I will save my flock. I will set up over them one shepherd, and he will feed them and be their shepherd. What good news. The one who stands to judge, who separates the sheep from the goats, is the great shepherd. The one who is judged, the one who hung on a cross in our place for our sins, for our self-absorption and selfishness, for our lack of attention to all those who are hurting and hungry around us, to fill in when we can't possibly get it right. This is the one who sits as king on the throne, on the right hand of God the one who gathers us in the waters of baptism, the one who is the word in worship, the one who feeds us the Eucharist meal with his very own body and blood so that we may be strengthened to work in the world, to feed, to clothe, to visit, to heal, and to live out our inheritance, the riches of God's grace. People of God, may we see Jesus. May it be so. Now let us pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.